I'd like to welcome you to my channel. If this is your first time or if you're coming back, I'd like to welcome you back and I hope that you find content here which on these videos which uh, blesses you, which shows you uh, more and more insight into the Bible and what Jesus has for you to do in your life today. The message I have for you right now is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. It's entitled, Christ the Healer. Uh, I am a past, have been ordained as a pastor in the Christian Missionary Alliance. Billy Graham started out in our denomination many years ago. And it, the founder of our denomination was a man from Canada, Toronto, Canada, named Albert Benjamin Simpson. And he uh, ministered in, in Toronto, and then he came to New York City. And he came to the point where he suffered what was called uh, nervous prostration and asthma for 20 years. Some kind of autoimmune disease, some sort of anxiety disorder, apparently. And it came to the point where he was told that he had only a few months to live. So he went with his family to a conference at Old Orchard Beach in Maine. And he heard at that conference the testimony of one young man who told about how he had been healed by Jesus from imminent death. He was about to die and he had been healed. And there were some others that he heard testify there how they had received healing simply by faith in the word of Jesus. Very simple, very profound, and very calm and confident testimonies of what God had done in their lives. So, even though he was a pastor, he had been through seminary and knew the Bible, he went back to the Bible, the right thing to do, and accepted the truth of the healing of Jesus as a part of the gospel without question as he went and examined healing in the Bible. And he made a covenant with God then. He took the Lord Jesus for his physical life, for the life of his body, and accepted the truth of healing as a part of the gospel without question. And he agreed to use this truth, this blessing, for the glory of God and the good of others. Not for show, not for reputation, not to break in the money, but for the good of others, for the glory of God and taking Jesus for his physical life for all the needs of the body. So the next Sunday, he gave his testimony how he had taken the Lord Jesus for his physical life and he, he expressed his trust that the Lord would faithfully take care of him. Again, this is he was told he only had a few months to live at this point. So he trusted Jesus for his eternity, but now he's trusting Jesus for his present, for his present life of his body to work in his life. And the next day, he went out with some others and climbed a 3,000 foot mountain. Wow. It had been difficult even before that to climb stairs, but he went out in faith in what he testified, what he trusted God to do. And from that day forward, he began to burst out with years of strenuous labor with tremendous energy and strength until he lived uh, from the late 1800s till just about the time of 1918. I believe he passed away in 1918. There's a lady I knew years ago who actually had known him when he was, she was a young girl and been in his ministry. So he was a man of tremendous energy and strength and the pictures of him show the joy of the Lord on his face from that time. So. We go to find Jesus is the life of our body. Jesus is our healer, Christ the healer. A striking part of the four gospels are the number of places where it talks about the healings of Jesus, the healings which he did. The people there in Judea, uh, and Samaria, Galilee, in the first century AD. And his healings take up about as much space as his teaching. It shows that what he did was what considered as important as what he said. He didn't come just to be a teacher. Our problem wasn't just ignorance. Our problem was needing salvation, body, soul, and spirit. And he began to show 
himself is the savior of the body also and his healings show the compassion of Jesus for human suffering and they show his tenderness and his concern as he dealt one on one with people with people as individuals who had needs he talked with them listened to them and gave them his saving power and authority over disease for healing he came with his saving power and authority over disease infirmity as well as his power and authority over sin and death not just trusting Jesus that if this body should die we'll go to be with him but trusting him now for our physical life and it's part of the whole scriptural portrait of the Almighty Christ the Son of God who is worthy of all our faith he is a Lord who is utterly trustworthy and as we step out and we take the whole Christ of the scriptures who is the basis of our strong mature and well ground faith will find that he will not fail us we can step out in faith trusting in him and we'll consider much more what that really means so we see jesus revealed here as the lord of salvation the lord who is a conqueror of sin and death by his crucifixion the conqueror also of disease and infirmity as well and lord who gives physical life to us in this life also powerful holy living by his resurrection power for the, through the Holy Spirit in this life also. He is a sin Lord also with almighty, almighty authority and power. And he continues to work compassionately today in the lives of his people. We see in the Gospels, in the Word of God, the same Jesus that we need to know also. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Lord of our eternal salvation, certainly. But we're also to make him known as the Lord of our physical life. He is the Lord that came to be known as Savior, Master, and Teacher, Power and Holiness, and also the Lord who heals. So let's see what Matthew had to say. Starts out with the testimony, then one to many to talk about what it means. When Jesus entered, Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases the power and authority of jesus christ is effective against all human suffering his power is more than, than sufficient in this world in this life his authority is more than sufficient in this life against whatever comes against us he is the lord who, the, who is the answer to our sufferings whatever they may be physical mental and spiritual so the power and authority of jesus is effective against all illness infirmity and disease his almighty power actually is actually been demonstrated in the lives of ordinary people in real situations against all kinds of mental and physical suffering first we see the first person in this testimony who jesus heals and then we see the healing being brought out to others when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. We don't know what that was. This happened actually at the end of a time of extraordinary teach, teaching in the town of Capernaum, which is still there today, in the house of Peter, which does appear from archaeology to, to have been found and to lie at the, um, at, at the foundation of a, a, church, a, a church or synagogue there. So Jesus has this place. We know where it is today. This this really happened we can come to the village we can come to the place and say that this healing right here happened right here and he had already demonstrated as he's teaching in the synagogue his power and authority over the tyranny and the terror over the demonic a demon possessed person had come out and spoken against him recognized him as the son of god so jesus told the demon to be quiet and come out of him and 
that person that person was delivered and Jesus went on to teach and he demonstrated before the people in that town the people who uh, probably knew him for, for years he had been with his family a carpenter uh, traditionally really um, a kind of a craftsman who uh, uh, may have worked in wood may have worked in stone also he may have had multiple skills so I uh, mean he demonstrated an authority like no one else that they had ever seen the authority of the Son of God himself he forgave sins he healed people and you no know, at this time Peter still kept his house for his family um, he still had private property but he had been called to be an apostle be a disciple he didn't renounce his private property he kept it and we see the house still persisting through a chapter night from uh, chapter 19 verse 27 there's still this house that Peter has there he he didn't sell all his power to give it all away he kept it for his family and his mother-in-law was in this house his mother-in-law was bedridden feverish and seems to have been incapacitated by whatever it was it's thought that it may have been malaria we don't have a modern diagnosis but whatever it was it was feverish she was incapacitated and what did Jesus do he gave her an immediate cure he came over lifted her up and the fever left her and she immediately began to serve him on a Sabbath apparently so she uh, served whatever was a previously prepared Sabbath meal perhaps so there was an immediate cure to her right then he, he touched her hand also and we could see that there may have been Pharisees that frowned upon him because he touched the hand of a woman where he wasn't married to her but he brought healing he went beyond the law to do the will of the father and he this is something we see in his healing so much so many times he habitually touched the untouchable and healed those who needed healing and his his life his power his healing was always greater than the disease his cleanness brought, brought cleansed all the unclean that he saw that he healed and that set off a round of healings that began in the evening after sunset uh, and we can see in uh, verse uh, 16 it says that the, uh, he healed all who were sick we're going to get to the uh, where he cast out spirits of the word in a moment but this there was a round of healings and that often does happen too that where one person receives healing another person other people who need healing say I can come to Jesus for my healing too and that's what this is here for us today so many uh, testimonies of healing not only just to establish the credentials of Jesus but to remind us that almighty power Jesus Christ is still available today for healing all who are suffering his healing power is sufficient against every human ailment and disease and we have all these testimonies of healings that invites is to invite faith in him for healings that we if we need healing now it isn't just uh, going and maybe hearing someone in church who had a healing go to the scripture first we find that the, the testimonies in scripture are testimonies of healing which are written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to be without error to be a true report sometimes we may not know some of the whether some of the healings which people testify to sometimes that uh, they, they may be bogus there have been some words of uh, uh, sometimes with some of the televangelists that people will go to uh, their healing services and uh, they'll be help set up and be able-bodied and uh, then they'll then when the time for the service comes they'll be there with crutches and stuff like that throwing down stuff putting together a show but the Gospels are the ones we go to first to find out what he can do with healing and they those who received healing from the hand of the Almighty Son of God from his power and authority can lead others to trust him and find out his trustworthiness for themselves it isn't about making ourselves great 
but pointing others to the Son of God to glorify Him because He is the healer. He is the one who brings healing to show the glory of God in lives. And the proper response to healing is to use the body which has been healed in service to Jesus to honor the Lord who heals, the Lord for the body. We've been called to honor God in our body, to give our bodies over as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. So, if we've been healed, use our body in service to Him, following Him. We really can't expect to go to Him, ask for healing, and then take our bodies out to use them. For things that dishonor him, for sin, to use them in defiance of his, his will. Heal me, Lord, so I can go out and sleep with someone that I'm not married to. So that I can use my tongue for gossip. So that I can hit someone, abuse someone in my family. No. If those are happening, repent of those first, then come to him for healing. Because whatever you may be going through may be his discipline to guide you to repent of those things to cleanse so that you can be cleansed of the sin as well as the disease and the infirmity but let's go on um, we find that uh, in mark chapter 8 verse 12 and we find that when jesus sent out the apostles and called them and sent them out for healing he delegated them the power to heal and the same power to heal and anoint with oil for healing is later Delegated by an apostle in James chapter 5 verses 14 through 15 to the elders of the church. So this continues today. Are there still elders? Well, we may not be able to trace uh, their back. Uh, their having been hand, hands laid up on the back to the apostles. But there are still people in our churches who are designated as elders who have been given this power. Been given this authority through the word of God to anoint people for healing. And many churches, many people have experienced the Lord healing them as they've come in obedience to, to what uh, is there in James chapter 14 and 15 to call to get the other elders of the church. Not the elders of the church to go looking for, but the person seeking to have faith for healing, to call the elders. So, and this is something that came into my own denomination as part of what we normally do and, many, and there are other churches which do this too. Even some churches which don't believe in tongues believe the cessationist churches, so to speak. Uh, they still believe in the anointing with oil for healing. Um, Dr. Charles Cullis, who uh, influenced uh, A.B. Simpson in understanding divine healing, had long been meditating over this promise at one time. And there was a, a female Christian missionary, missionary lady, who had been under his care for a time who, for a tumor that was to be operated on. So one day he took her aside, read this promise to her, and they agreed together to trust God first. Um, he anointed her with oil, he prayed with her, and the tumor gradually but quickly disappeared. Sometimes the healings are gradual but quick. That's happened to my, me myself at times when I've asked for healing doesn't happen like that but it does happen within a day within a over a week perhaps so the power and authority of Jesus as we look on in this passage in verse 16 the first part of verse 16 the power of and authority of Jesus is also effective against all spiritual affliction and suffering we see here the reality of demonization of oppression by demons which happens in all ages they are blatant and not so many blatant works of the enemy of our souls. And they really do bring suffering, real suffering, to people around the world. But that falls beyond, before the sovereign authority of Jesus Christ. The word of Jesus is sufficient to bring relief to those who are suffering from the oppression of the devil. And there's a special point here in verse 16. They brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word. He was effective against all the demonic oppression in the areas that was brought before him. Just as he had been effective, just the same ways he had 
I dealt with a demonized man who came to disrupt his ministry at the synagogue. And this authority over demons continued to be a special showcase for the power and authority of Jesus as Messiah throughout his earthly ministry. The Son of God, he didn't have to go through any elaborate rituals, cast them out with a word. And this was a simple and awe inspiring exercise of personal authority with a simple command. It was very different from the intricate, extensive, and unreliable exorcism rituals and formulas of that time. There were the rabbis, uh, some of the others, uh, itinerant teachers, uh, itinerant uh, charlatans seemingly, who had all these elaborate um, hoaxes, ways to try to cast out demons. And there were demons around there that seemed actually to have been associated. There's an early commentary on, from the Gospel of, on a passage in the Gospel of Mark which seems to indicate that uh, there were two sources of demonization, idolatry with its associate occult and sexual immorality. So those things do open people up to the influence of the enemy. We see when that does happen though, in our day, the power and authority of Jesus is still effective today against the reality of demonization wherever it occurs. He delegated to his disciples to use through the power of the Spirit against every work of the enemy, his power, his authority, whatever it may be, deception, temptation, influence, oppression, possession. His authority is efficient simply using his name, and this is a sign that the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. The devil had been, had been working in our world for many, many years, since, since the day of Adam and Eve. But the power of Jesus came to destroy his works. And the authority was also delegated to the apostles. And then also to the 70 uh, and uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 19 and that number the 70 others who were apart from the apostles seems to be symbolic of the number of the elders it comes from the Old Testament that that was also something knowing of oil for healing and special and use of authority of Jesus against the works of the enemy delegated to elders especially I think but I think that the experience of the people of God is whoever is a believer in Jesus. Not to be presumptuous with this, but can know and use an authority in the name of Jesus against the power of the enemy when they come against him. Him or her. When the power of the enemy comes against him or her. So, the power and authority which Jesus exercised against all physical, mental, and spiritual suffering during his ministry is still available and effective today. He has lost none of his power over the ages. There's been no expiration date, no use-by date on his power against human, human suffering, whatever it may be. He hasn't lost any of his compassion either. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he will still respond to the faith of his people follow the guidance of his word and come to him in faith who pray to the Father in his name for the glory of God to receive from his hand and this will be a continued expression a witness the continued life and ministry of the risen Lord the Lord he's the Lord for whom we can carry the impossible cases the power of Jesus then and now against disease and human suffering wasn't something it was simply an optional add-on to his ministry. Rather, it was a revelation of his ministry, his mission for all ages. The healing ministry of Jesus in all ages reveals him as the Lord who takes away human disease, infirmity, and suffering. It reveals him throughout his life, his ministry, and through his atoning death on the cross and his resurrection is the one who conquers disease and suffering as well as the conqueror of sin and death. The healing ministry of Jesus is a part of his messiahship 
And this fulfills the promise that came through the prophets about the person who would come, the Messiah. And this shows his credentials according to Old Testament prophecy. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. This is the prophecy which is taken from Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 4, which is implied that this was fulfilled during the ministry, healing ministry of Jesus. But when we look at the context, we, we know that Isaiah 53 wasn't just fulfilled. Then it was fulfilled primarily in the crucifixion and resurrection. So the healings fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, definitely. So what is Matthew doing here? I think there's a word play on the word taking and bearing. He took away our diseases by bearing them away, healing them. And I think that as we really look at understanding Isaiah 53, 4 in its own context back in Isaiah 53, points to bearing away our diseases our suffering through the cross. A lot of people try to import the word spiritual in there, but I think that's, that kind of discounts, I think, the realization of the, the redemption of the body that's there in Isaiah. And we see right here with this verse 17, this is a full apostolic endorsement of using the Isaiah passage to speak to physical diseases, physical infirmity, and not to try to spiritualize the application of that verse. We find this right here in Matthew, the apostle, who was a very good Old Testament scholar. I think if we, the more I look at the Gospel of Matthew, I, you really knew that. You really knew the Old Testament applied it well. Better than we understand a lot of times nowadays. So Jesus, through his ministry, bore away sin and death and disease in his ministry through his commands of healing and forgiveness. He bore away sin and death and disease in his crucifixion through suffering and dying on our behalf. And there's also the relation of the freedom of sin and healing. Also, by the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, the eyewitness of what was happening right there associating healing, and again, there's the word spiritual, we don't find it there. In 1 Peter chapter says that he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, may live to righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Healing coming there through Jesus again. And it's been considered that uh, when Peter's talking there, he's actually speaking to Christian slaves in that, in that uh, paragraph, that they may have actually been healed through the wounds, their own wounds, from being beaten by the beatings which happened to Jesus. That Jesus brought them healing for what had happened to them, for their injuries. Wow. So, we see the significance of Jesus' healings in the Old Testament prophecy as the deeds of the, as the, the, deeds of the promised Messiah and the signs of the kingdom of God which come there. We see the compassion of God for the suffering of his people, and we see the beginning of redemption from disease and infirmity, sin and death, through the ministry of Jesus. We see him as the healer. And this indicates our reason, our basis for coming to him for physical healing. Upon the suffering and death of Jesus on our behalf, upon that Upon that basis, the suffering and death of Jesus on our behalf. Certainly God has great love and compassion for the forgiveness of sin, for the conquest of sin and the conquest of death. Those are all centered in the conquest of the cross. But we also have his love and his compassion for healing also. Healing, we can consider, could be a covenant privilege for believers. I believe that's very true. That we can come as those who have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus, suffered and died for us, 
to receive healing that has come for us. And we know then even that he's a promised Messiah in our day when it happens too. Not just a wise man, a prophet, a teacher that lived years ago, but a Messiah who continues to show himself as the Son of God today calls us to accept his authority, faith, and submission, and we'll see him working in our life today. There's a story of a Jewish man who was given a New Testament, and after he had read it, he went to the rabbi and said, I know we do not accept Jesus as our Messiah, but can you tell me what our Messiah would have done differently than what Jesus did during his life? And the rabbi couldn't give an answer. So, points to Jesus the Messiah, and that calls us to faith in Jesus as our healer. If we're a believer in Jesus as our Savior, as our Lord, as our teacher, master, friend, receive him as our healer also. That's my challenge to you, and we're going to be going through that. On the basis of his suffering and death, the healer who took away our disease, receive him as your healer also. You may not have anything you really feel is wrong with you, but just as you received his forgiveness and eternal life as Lord and Savior through his death and resurrection, ask him to be your healer, to be the life of your body also. The most important part of the reception of the gospel is reception of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ upon the basis of his atoning death. That's the most important part. That's the first thing. Upon the basis of his death and resurrection, receive salvation. The issue of someone's eternal salvation is always the most important issue to be settled. Healing is then becomes one of our covenant privileges of believers. And what we'll, and if you believe that, that doesn't mean we'll always be perfectly and always healed in this life, just as we do not believe in this life that will be perfectly delivered from sin. The perfect deliverance in this life from sin and death and disease. We believe that he, Jesus is the conqueror, but we don't believe that it's always complete, but we do believe that it's coming. We do believe that one day we'll be glorified to be like him forever, never to be touched by sin and death and suffering ever again. So, this comes back that there is that need to get right with God, to receive eternal life by faith in Jesus Christ. And if we don't always receive a miracle and healing, the Lord hasn't failed. He hasn't promised that we'll be free from everything in this life. I once knew a lady years ago, uh, she's an old believer, and her husband became deathly ill, and uh, he, he did pass away, and it was hard on her, and there were people that she knew that were telling me, yeah, enough faith will be healed, and as he passed away, they are even expecting in the funeral home that he's going to be raised up out of the casket, and uh, she told me that... Uh, she prayed about it and she's led in the word to a place where in Ecclesiastes where the word says there is a time to die. And that she accepted that that was his time at that time. And she lived and ministered and to others after afterwards, after her husband had gone on. So it's no way that God has ever failed in this life if our physical body fails if we have our faith in him for eternal life and I believe this lady may well have passed away by this time and to see her husband there in glory with him wow well, that's the ultimate healing so if you know Jesus Christ as Savior he offers himself as healing as the healer also as one of the benefits of his atoning death Receive his saving compassion for your body. Let him be the Lord of your body and your life. Of course you need to be right with God. You can't expect to receive healing if you're uh, living apart from the known will of God. I knew a, past, uh, a pastor. He gave a testimony about a book. Uh, in one of his books, it was uh, he ministered in a small town in Pennsylvania, and there's a woman from his congregation. Uh, this is the testimony which... Uh, um, again, I haven't heard anyone else corroborate this, but I, I believe that the, this was 
through something he did experience. A woman who was dying with cancer, she asked for forgiveness for the criticisms that she'd been spreading about him. Wow. Shouldn't we be doing that every time we ask for healing, confessing our sin, taking care of it, get, making ourselves as clean as possible, nothing on the conscience, nothing on the heart, nothing between us and other believers, we can reach out in faith. But once she had done that, this woman, she began to be healed. The report was that uh, she vomited up a lot of cancer, which I'm not sure about that. I wouldn't dare witness that. I've never, I've heard that uh, being testified to other times though. So um, that may have actually happened as far as the vomiting up, but as far as the healing, that was the testimony. So um, do we still believe in medicine? Well, Jesus himself, Mark chapter two, verse 19, talked about the sick need a doctor. A sick have need of a physician. So if you're a physician, the healing uh, power of Jesus, you're still employed. You still have a reason for your work. And I've known and have been friends of many Christian physicians. And in Matthew chapter 25, verses 36 and 43, Jesus expects us as a part of Christian love to take care of the sick. So uh, healing doesn't cancel any of these things out. It's not a big X that we uh, don't need doctors, that we don't need to take care of the sick. And we don't have any need to forbid medicine. Um, I think we need to discourage an entire trust in medicine as if it would succeed without the Lord. Um, the practice is generally best pray before seeking medicine, before going to a physician. It does take that long. We're not, talk, not talking about hours and days, but it could just be simply breathing up, Lord, this is, I'm coming to you first. I'm, I've paid you my healer. And even though I'm going to the emergency room or whatever, I trust in you. I think that many times we do have a presumption when we throw away medicine before the Lord indicates that the time has come or that there is realization of healing. We can use, use medicine until the Lord indicates that we need healing or that healing has come or that healing has happened. Even surgery also. I had a torn cartilage in my knee back in 19, uh, about from October uh, 1980 to, I had an operation in June 1981. I, and, uh, you know, I was asking prayer for uh, like uh, two or three churches where I was acquainted. And one of the pastor, and when I asked prayer, gave this uh, dramatic prayer, you know, giving me the faith to reach out for healing. And I talked with my roommate and you kind of felt these trying to put some sort of guilt trip that I needed to be, which what actually happened was in June, 1981, I did undergo surgery and I recovered. In fact, I was house sitting for Robbie Zacharias at the time I recovered at Robbie's house, which is pretty nice at that time. And I didn't take any medication, didn't have any problem with pain. I was walking, I was able to go back to work within a week. And I talked to a nurse afterwards, she said, you didn't take anything? You know, I had this prescription for uh, Tylenol with codeine. Well, we expect people to be in a lot of pain after that operation. So I just, and the surgeon said that the uh, equipment, it was uh, arthroscopic surgery, so the, the machine worked perfectly in that time. He couldn't believe how well the surgery went. So the Lord was involved even there. Sometimes his healing may not just be go away right there, you're done. But gradually, sometimes working through medicine, sometimes working through doctors. And I've even experienced times where uh, it's some kind of injury to my body, muscular injury. Well, I need to go through rehab. I've had that for my shoulders and uh, I'm going through it right now for my hips. My hips do start to be, uh, seem to be uh, getting better. It was an injury that uh, seemed to happen and ha going on off and on since August of 2018. Wow. But sometimes, you know, the Lord, I think, does do that to make us take care of our bodies better. That if it's an injury that you can go through rehab, take care of your body better than you have it, right? Be more careful about how you use your body. So I trust in his wisdom. I trust in his compassion. I trust in his love. I trust that he can heal me instantly, gradually, or 
whatever. But that's my testimony right now. So, the Lord of salvation is the Lord who gives a complete salvation. His salvation is from sin and death and disease and infirmity as well as all those other things else come through his death through us and through his power and his resurrection he likewise gives eternal life and glory as well as physical life to serve him right now. So there's that invitation he gives I believe. The belief he's giving us to you right now. Let him be the Lord of your body too. The Lord of your body. So it isn't something you're just going to uh, be done with. You're going to be resurrected to be like with him and like him one day. You're going to be recognized as who you are in a physical body. Take care of it. It comes from him. He intends for us to use it carefully and well and cherish it. And take care of it. And to trust him. To trust him as our healer as well as our Lord and Savior for our eternal destiny. So the first and the greatest need, again, is always Christ as our Lord and Savior. He calls us first to the submission of our lives before him, to receive him by faith of love for our eternal salvation, to receive the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and acceptance with God. That's the first thing which needs to be settled. And if you haven't done that, he calls you, calls you just as he calls each one of us to repentance for our sins, to return to God, and to open faith in Him as our Lord and our Savior. He has died for us and He has risen again. And Christ as healer is available for those who have faith in Him as Lord and Savior, those who have been born again of His Spirit. And this calls for a conscious acceptance of Him now as the Lord of your body. Just simply tell it to Him. Don't care what I, you don't even have to say it in a way which anyone else can hear, but say it right to him, accept him for the health and the life of your body now, even if you aren't sick now, until your time on earth is done. Accept him now. Just make, make that, make that agreement with him. Tell him now. And if you are in a church which does have the anointing of oil as part of the ministry of elders, he's available now through that way. If your church believes in the Bible's word of God and accepts the promise of James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15, as part of his continuing ministry, now go, go to him and receive him. If you're sick, call the elders, ask to be anointed. Or maybe if they, they may provide a case after time of communion or end of a service, go to him. We must never treat that as simply an empty ritual or magic that if we just say the words, it's going to happen. It's we come to the Lord in faith. We don't just say the words to be nice people. We don't do it to be nice people. We don't do it as a ritual. It's not magic either. And it's nothing in any way to ever glorify ourselves, to make ourselves look good, to try to be somebody big on ourselves. We're pointing to a Savior who is big, very big eternal, omnipresent, omniscient. We're going to him to receive his healing power and receive justice communion with a clear conscience. We'll go to him confessing our sins, receiving his forgiveness and the cleansing by the blood of Christ. Receive in the way he's appointed through the church, especially if that's available to you. If you want to, well, maybe you might need to go to a church which does that if you believe that God is leading you right now. If you're not, even if, and if you're not a part of any church, look for one which believes in the Bible the word, is the Word of God, which believes in salvation by grace through faith, which Jesus believes in Jesus as the Son of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, and also healing. Ask, tell the pastor you'd like to receive this according to the Again, point to James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Ask him and make, you know, tell, tell him that you've repented of all the sins that you know about that time. Just ask the Lord to open your conscience and receive his healing. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that you learn to know the Lord is the life of your body, your healer, the Lord for your body, because this physical body isn't something disposable, something that will be with us through all eternity, not as it is mortal and subject to sin, infirmity, and death right now. I bet. I think that uh, 
if you see me in eternity, you you maybe recognize a face, but you uh, you'll be seeing a different person, uh, renewed, renovated person there, glorified to be like Jesus. And I believe that if you trust in Jesus, you'll be seeing yourself the same way too. Full person, body, soul, and spirit, sanctified, made holy, to be like Jesus forever. The ultimate healing to experience by you if your faith is in Jesus. So, thank you for your time. Uh, again, I hope this blessed you. And uh, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, hear more. Because uh, there will be more that I will be talking about healing different places uh, in on this channel. Thank you.